Milton's Adventure, A Milton Story, narrated by Ed Porncroft. Chapter 1. The Frightful Fifty-Five. It was a breezy Thursday afternoon on Dartmoor National Park, with few clouds and warm, clean air. An adolescent boy could be seen meandering across the hills and dales, seemingly without a care in the world. The peppy young lad swaggered across the grasslands, with half an egg and cress sandwich in one hand, and a strange glass goblet in the other. His hair was blonde, long, and unwashed, and his expression, cocksure yet jovial. He wore cargo shorts and a faded red hoodie. On his head sat a little red cap, bearing the Union Jack, and over his shoulders was slung an Attack on Titan Survey Corps errand backpack. This boy's name was Milton. Now, Milton Hamley Oliver wasn't just your average 14-year-old boy. No, he was a little bit more than that. While other boys of his age would be out playing ball in the fields or canoodling with all the girls, Milton was content with the simpler things. A day on his Game Boy Colour, or a stroll across Devon's largest protected moorland. In truth, Milton was hardly normal at all, partly because of his highly irregular upbringing, but mainly because of his great destiny. You see, Milton was special. From a young age he had been known to read minds, and throw things across the room without touching them. Above this was his sense of mission. Right now, he was undertaking a great task, with gravity beyond any mortal comprehension. Milton broke into an impressive gate, and hopped a small stream, bounding from tussock to tussock in his cheap burgundy air walks. He paused and lifted his hand to survey the landscape, and there on the horizon stood a humble cottage, a homely wisp of wood smoke emanating from a chimney on top. Milton grinned and continued eagerly up the hill toward it. The afternoon sun perfectly silhouetted a figure atop the ridge, outlining a stocky form, hands on hips, with the familiar shape of a chef's taupe blanc hat perched upon his head. Dad, called out Milton over the gentle Dartmoor breeze. The man welcomed Milton with open arms, and Milton ran into his embrace. This man was none other than British TV chef Jamie Oliver, Milton's illegitimate father and mentor. Milton, my boy, how have your travels fared? Jamie spoke in his distinct cockney lilt. I trust you have taken good care of the chalice? He indicated the antique Versailles shell water glass in Milton's left hand. Yes, father. I've handled it with the utmost care. Its magical properties are only now becoming evident to me, as I feel it fuse with my being. Milton held the glass piece aloft. This transparent titan was known to many as the Bloodstone Chalice, an ancient relic forged from the mythic bloodstones of yore, said to contain the energies of one thousand gods and the might of a billion champions, as well as being the keystone between reality and the fabled Pucker Realm. I've been drinking from it a lot too, claimed Milton. That irony orange stuff tastes great. Jamie offered a strong pat on the boy's back. This is good to hear, Milton. Now come inside. We have much to address. The chubby chef led the young boy into the small cottage, affectionately named Lodestone Lodge. It was warm and welcoming inside. A central fireplace stoked a pot of more grouse broth, which broiled away, producing a hearty meaty odour and a gentle sizzle. The walls and floors were lined with multitudes of cooking books, spanning hundreds if not thousands of years. They piled high to the ceiling, where a tapestry depicting a night sky during the bloodstone hail, a comet shower that took place many aeons ago, was painted. To the right, a small kitchen area, with every utensil and cooking apparatus known to man, and some that weren't. In the corner of the lodge sat one of Jamie's women, reading a cookery book on the catching and preparation of giant squid, an old rocking chair. She smiled at Milton with friendly eyes. Wipe your shoes off before you come in, requested Jamie, unlacing his big brown boots. Where's Toby? asked Milton, looking around the room eagerly. Jamie hesitated and scratched his nose. Toby's dead. He was an old dog. You know this, Milton. Milton sighed sadly, and Jamie beckoned him to take a seat on one of the four plush sofas situated around the fire pit. Milton's seat. We have much to discuss. Milton obliged, taking off his backpack and reclining deep into the soft couch. 
Now, I know you've been doing things on your own for a while now, but I need to ask something of you. Your next task is part of your induction into the Order. Yeah, replied Milton. As you know, the prophecy foretells that the champion of the chalice is to be unmatched in power and might. Uh Uh-huh. You've already got to know the ways of the chalice. The power is there, but it's dormant inside you. It needs to be beckoned from within, awakened. Of course, Dad. Jamie Oliver sat forward in his chair, the glow from the fire casting a flickering shadow across his face. I've told you of Krog, have I not? Milton responded, firing off Jamie's previous teachings. Of course. Krog is the deity responsible for the creation of the Pucker Order and the Bloodstone Chalice itself. Jamie perused his temples with his fat fingers. Yes. Yes, indeed. But, Milton, you must know that Krog is not all smiles and laughter. For while Krog is indeed a divine being, he is likewise filled with hatred and malice for all that he has created. Milton nodded. Many thousands of years ago, Krog created his agents of primary annihilation, otherwise known as the Frightful 55, to carry out his vicious biddings. Milton's eyes widened. The Frightful 50 what? The Frightful 55, replied Jamie, born from the base plane null and scattered across the cosmic ladder to manifest throughout the seven areas. You recall the events of the Boulder Wars in 1312, I presume? Myself and the Pucker Order face hordes and hordes of these demons spawn. We succeeded in banishing the beings, but 55 of the 80,000 terrors escaped to live on. To this day, they carry out the ancient orders of Krog. Milton, I think you know what I'm getting at with this. Milton gazed into the flame. I think I understand, Dad. You want me to go around killing these demons, right? Jamie slapped his knees. Yes, Milton. You must think of this as your training. Not only that, but the chalice will benefit from the slaying of these demons. You will feel yourself grow alongside it. Milton stood up suddenly, holding the chalice aloft once more. I now understand my mission, Father. I will undertake these trials, not only as my training, but for my own personal and spiritual gain. Milton made for the door, his mission now clear. Milton, hold on, cried Jamie. I haven't told you where to go. Milton sat back down. Oh yeah. Jamie rustled around in his tunic pocket, pulling out some ketchup sachets before handing Milton a tattered piece of paper, clearly torn from a spiral-bound 125 by 200 millimeter lined office pad. Milton received it with readied hands. This ancient list compiles all 55 of the demons in no particular order. Catharsis the Incinerator. Diavolo, King of the Crimson Castle. Paul Pork! These are all just made-up names. No, Milton, far from it. These are beings of great power, some more so than others, but they all have one thing in common. They all know who you are, and they all want the chalice. You cannot let them take it from you at all costs. Understood, nodded Milton. As it turns out, there is an evil presence at large on this very moor. Milton looked up in shock. This very moor? Jamie indicated the list. Number 12, the demon known as Peanut Pete is your first target. Milton chuckled at the name. <laughs> peanut Pete! Sounds like you have, a, have to have been a mascot for some peanut butter company. Jamie slammed his fist down hard on his knee. No, Milton, there is great power at play here. Peanut Pete laid waste to many thousands of nights in the past. He is no joke! Okay, sorry, said Milton quietly. Now this is no task to undertake alone, which is why I will be bestowing you with your very own... Parcanarium familiar. Milton, hold out your palm. Milton obliged, holding forth his sweaty hand. Jamie removed a small pouch containing a cumin-like substance from his top pocket and applied a small dusting to Milton's palm. Once a small pile had been amassed, Jamie pressed the beige powder with his thumb, momentarily causing Milton great pain, then a warm, soothing feeling. Wow, I feel funny, moaned a dazed Milton, smiling. Then all of a sudden, hunching double and retching. That's it, my boy. Let it out. Milton heaved and spluttered, tears trickling from the corners of his eyes, until he felt something shoot out of his throat and land on the carpet. Jamie stood excitedly. There it is. What? wheezed Milton, looking down to see a small yellow-green striped butterfly-like creature on the floor, covered in saliva. Jamie picked it up and cradled it in his hands. 
Wow, beautiful. This winged being will act as a demon sealant, banishing the evils away to the confinements of the Pucker Realm once weakened by the power of the chalice. Yours has taken the form of a little butterfly. What are you going to call her? Milton stared, confused at the winged thing. Uh, 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 bird. What? It's not a... Uh, okay, very well. Your familiar shall henceforth be known as the bird. The little yellow thing sprung into action, flitting about the room to land on Milton's shoulder. How the horror! I'm the bird! At last, my sweet voice will be heard! Milton giggled and allowed the little creature to rest on his stabby fingertip. The best thing about Parkinarium familiars is to anyone else. They just appear as cheap plastic toys. Look, mine's a rubber lobster. Wow, gasped Milton, in awe. Now the thing about these is they know the way, Milton. They're basically a little sat nav. You've got to keep them on you at all times. The bird chimed in. Yes, it's true. I know the way from Talbot Town to Chuckenhall. Milton stood up once again, hand on heart. Now, father, I hear the moor calling. I surely must be off. Jamie held up his hand. One more thing, Milton. I'm going to bestow you with this. Jamie stuck his hand between the sofa cushions and rummaged around for a while until he pulled out a great sheathed blade. This is an ancient and powerful pucker bayonet that saw use in the Bodiscalia Wars. It was once my own Milton. Use it with honour, for it has slain many men and beasts. Wow, stuttered Milton. All of this just for me? Um, am I going to have to use it? Jamie passed the blade to Milton. Truth be told, I cannot say. There may come a time when you need it, but who knows? Okay, Dad, announced Milton, attaching the old blade to his belt. I think it's probably time to leave. Indeed. The evening draws near. Report back here once your task is complete. Milton embraced Jamie Oliver and made for the door, opening it and heading out into the vast expanse of the moor. A cold breeze had whipped up by now, and it blew Milton's wispy hair around behind him. He took one look back at the small cottage and made for the hills. The howling of the wind seemed to form whispering words in the air, chanting over and over again, Peanut Pete! Peanut Pete! Peanut Pete!